Today, we're going to learn how to turn plain, boring mail armor into this decorated chainmail. For this project, you will need the following items. Firstly, you will need copper wire. This can be obtained from places like the internet, or in places like scrapyards. Secondly, you will need some sort of rod, or item like this, to wrap the copper around to make a coil. After that, you will need something to cut the coil into individual rings. If you can fit large items like tin snips into there and make the job easy, good for you, but you'll most likely need fine-nosed cutting pliers like these. Then, of course, you will need something like this. Two pairs of fine-nosed pliers. Too large and you'll struggle to put them into the pattern. Ones like this, whether they have straight heads, flat heads, or curved heads like this, any will do the trick. Lastly, you need some sort of item to modify. Now first up you'll be seeing my back of head protector that I use for sparring in historical European martial arts. That will be modified because it's got sort of chainmail uh, cosmetic attachments on it. And then after that you'll see how I got this shirt modified. Get that straightened up first. Rather curled up. And now for the agonising part. So, here's my fencing mask. This is one of the projects we're going to be doing today, because if you've seen my sparring videos, you will notice this on the back of the head protector, which has hard plastic plates for extra decent protection and padding. I have as a cosmetic attachment, put these rings on, which are using some pre-made uh, steel rings of a similar diameter and thickness to the copy, copper rings that we've made. But uh, I want to put a trim on it, so what we'll need to do is remove this from the mask. I'll need to remove a row of these steel rings, because that's the where the bottom is, it lines up at the bottom of the actual protector. And because it's exactly level, to put copper rings on there and not have them droop over the edge, I'll need to remove a layer of the steel rings, replace them with the copper ones, and then Jobs are good and And there was one detail I'd forgotten, which is that on this design it actually tapers down and sort of triangulates inwards, see if I can get a good view for it. And it kind of triangulates or curves a bit inwards here. So I will need to add some steel rings to the sides and then of course do the copper.
So, as we can see, the neck is going to be an interesting story, because if you look at these parts, it's going diagonally. And I noticed when I was examining this, I don't know if the camera will be able to catch the details, but this used to be a more open v-neck. You might notice around these sides, it's entirely made of proper riveted rings. We go to the middle here, just where this part triangulates and finishes. In between, you see these butted small rings, which are the ones that I added on. What I could do is, apart from making a neck, I could also add a cosmetic effect on the connections here. So I'll get to that. So that's it for today, thank you all for watching up to this point, and just to prove that you've watched this far, I want you to leave a comment that makes it sound as if you've been an armourer for so long that it has driven you insane. Uh, you know, a comment something along the lines of, the patterns, they speak to me, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, Apart from that, uh, obviously if you have any further questions about the materials and the tools I've used, or how this sort of armour performs in historical European martial arts and such things, you know, feel free to ask. And uh, just a last final thing before I go, here's an extra something for you, Ben, my co-worker. Hello Ben, I told you this place is real, look. Wait, uh, real. And look, I'm not green screening or anything. Uh, uh, yeah. I told you so. So, uh, thank you for your time and have a good day as always. <laughs>